Coach Rasan Edwards. What's up? Head coach for the Washington Patriots girls basketball team. Your first year as the head coach there. Can you talk about, you know, how it's been, you know, your transition from being the assistant coach last year to the head coach now? Yes, it's been, the, the biggest thing is um, that we had a connection with the players. So that was, that was a huge part, you know, going from an assistant where, you know, you, you can definitely offer input and you want to offer input because at the end of the day, it's about building the program. It's about helping the girls get better or, you know, boys get better. And then and also, you know, we want to, we want, we just want to see them succeed on and off the court. Um, so, you know, the biggest thing was just having that connection. So, you know, you know, and then we, when you're on the bench, you know, you just offer your, just what you see, because it, it's, it's really, it, it is really difficult to, to run a varsity or a high school program with you know one or two of you it's really difficult to do that so you know you need as many eyes as you possibly can um, so that was one thing that we definitely tried to do as an assistant is just offer you know different um, things maybe different strategies on how we can be successful so that part you know and what i never wanted to do was be the assistant who was trying to overtake or you know, step on the head coach's toes, but sure. we never want to do that. I always want to stay in my lane. Um, but in transitioning to the head coach um, was, it wasn't, it wasn't a bad transition because we had that connection. Sure. And then, you know, um, Coach Grantham and I, we knew, we knew what pieces we had coming in. Uh, we knew what pieces were already there. So now it was just a matter of continuing to build that relationship with our players and then also helping them just grow mature we're going to be young so we you know just trying to mature and going in off the court again for sure so washington high school has been around for about 12 to 13 years mm -hmm. and in the whole history of washington girls basketball they've never been to the state tournament right. and you guys you know just made that happen last week right. can you talk a little bit about the emotions after that regional championship game you know that was tremendous i did, it didn't hit me at, at first, it, it didn't really hit me. I was, but I just love seeing the girls, how their expressions, you know, their natural reactions and just their excitement for it. So, you know, that part made me feel even better than just actually what we accomplished. So just seeing what they did and see behind the scenes, there was so much going on that, sure. you know, not a lot of the public knew about, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? But we had to, we had to handle it because yeah. At the end of the day, you know, no one's gonna feel sorry for you, right? We couldn't, my biggest thing was, you know, look, this is our hand we dealt. We have to, we're not gonna make excuses. We're just gonna keep pushing forward. And, you know, so I'm hoping they are, they really grew um, just really off the court after going through what we went yep. through this year. So oh, that's sure. that's the biggest thing for, for us. Sure. Before the season started, you were newly named the head coach. Did you see this? You know, back in May, June, did you see you guys winning a regional championship, moving on to the state tournament? Mm -hmm. Could you, you know, you know, people usually try to say, mm -hmm. I always knew we could, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Did you actually see that in the future for you guys this, this year so fast? Honestly, yes. Like I'm, I'm never in a, I'm never looking at a situation where I don't feel like we can win. So we just have to figure out how we're going to do it. That's the biggest thing. And, you know, and, it, and it, this is no disrespect to any school or whatever it is. I just, I'm always of the mindset we can win. Yep. So we just have to figure that out on how we need to do it. And, you know, where it's going to take, it was going to be a process. I didn't want to rush our process on how we got to a certain point. Um, and we're still growing. Don't, you know, we're still growing. But I love the fact that they've grown and, you know, and, what we told what we said from day one was we we're going to be a team where we're going to start off kind of slow but come february march you're not going to want to play us so nope. yep. so and that was always our approach yep. and we didn't back off of that yep. and you you know as a coach you know, on championship teams you talk about roles i believe you had three all-conference players this year so talk a little bit about you know how you got, you know, your whole team in general to buy into different roles, you know what I mean? I, I believe, you know, most times, a lot of people want to be the leading scorer, mm -hmm. you know, they want to lead in certain uh, stati statistical categories. Uh, can you talk a little bit about, you know, how important it is to get your team to buy in early uh, before, you know, all these awards and stuff come out? That's a, that's a, that's a good question. We, so we had, we had two first team, we had two second team. 
I think the only thing that we wanted to preach was that we can't do it. You can't do it alone. We're not a team where we can do anything by ourselves, right? So we have to figure out, okay, there's gonna be nights where player A may have 18, player C may have 12, and then the next night, player C may have 18, player A may have 10 or whatever it is. So that was, we tried to instill those little seeds in their head and just realize that also uh, with that, you know, it, it, your game, your today might not be a game where you're impacted by points. Like the game is not always won by how many points you put in the bucket, right? So we have to figure out what this is, what this team is doing, how we're going to maneuver it to where you can be as successful as possible. And we, they are, they're, we're getting there. We're definitely, we're getting there. And we, we're almost there. We're not quite there yet, but we're definitely getting there. We're definitely getting and there. And that's, you know, great to hear, you know, because you, you know, year one, come in mm -hmm. as the head coach, you know, you go to the state tournament. It could mm -hmm. easily be, you know, you, you could be thinking way past everything. You know, you could, um, you could be satisfied, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because you have a core that is young, you know, mm -hmm. they're coming back next year, but you still have the mindset that, you know, we're not there yet, but we still have, we still have strides to make. Um, mm -hmm. I think that says a lot about, you know, your character and that you were well deserving of this head coaching position because you sure. view the game like that. Um, above being a head coach, you're also a dad, mm -hmm. husband. Can you talk about, you know, the balance, you, you know, your son, Rasan, he's mm -hmm. playing Division One basketball right now. It's, mm -hmm. you know, conference, turn, conference tournament time. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about how you juggle coaching your team while being the family man you are? That Now that one this year has been, honestly, it's been tough. Uh, you know, our games have been conflicting with his games a lot this year, but you know, he always knows I'm right there. There's never a question where, you know, if I'm if I have to watch the game live stream, I'm watching the game live stream. And then, you know, we talk about it later on, maybe a day later, you know, if he's upset about the loss or something like that, you know, we try to give him some downtime and and he's he's grown up now where, you know, since he was four, you know, we've gone from multiple sports and you know, but he always knows I'm always right there. You know what I mean? I've been um, you know, his mom is always his biggest support system. You know, I'm always there to be a support system, but also pushing to do more. And, you know, we're not going to settle for just this and you're not going to settle for just being a certain point. And now he's grown into where he's evolved into his own. You know what I mean? So now I just offer my just advice on how he can do things. So he's, you know, he, he understands what I'm doing. Um, and, you know, I know he his dreams, his goals, and you know, I'm also I'm just I'm always going to be there, whether I'm physically there or, you know, just a Facetime call away. So sure, you know, for sure, that's where we are. You know, you talk a little bit about um, preparation before the season. Mm -hmm. You know, and this you know was a great season. You know, regular season, uh, sectional, regional for Washington girls basketball. Win or lose the state tournament, how do you keep your girls motivated? Um, you know, just coming off this, just making the state, they made history this year. You guys made history this year. How do you keep girls motivated and staying hungry? You know what I mean? Because we've seen it before from, you know, college, NBA, mm -hmm. you know, teams can go to the finals, but it, it's not guaranteed that you get back it's every not. year. So how do you, how will you keep your girls motivated? Um, what messages will you tell them, you know, through the summer workouts mm -hmm. and things like that? And you just touched on a point on it. We're not guaranteed to go back, right? So you have to make the best of every moment and moment. And you know, what we've discussed just as just in life is we can't take things for granted, right? Because we don't know, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Um, we don't want to ever look at a situation and think, oh, well, we'll go next year because, oh, I heard this player is doing this. Listen, that doesn't mean anything to me because we still, you still have a game to play. And your job and my job is to help you be the best player you can possibly be. And that is on and off the court. So you conduct yourself accordingly in the classroom, you conduct yourself accordingly out in the community, and then you conduct yourself accordingly on the court. And once we do those things, we're gonna to continue to strive to be better because that's the end goal. Like I, and I'm not gonna settle for just, we're going to state one year and think that's gonna be good enough for me, it's not. 
So we're gonna come along on this ride. I'm gonna bring you guys along and we're just gonna continue to go. And you know, if you guys wanna work, we're always here to work. You know, we're gonna be in the, we're gonna be in the gym in the off season. We're gonna be in the weight room. We're gonna be doing a lot of things to help you guys continue to progress. So you wanna go on to the next level. You wanna go on to school. It's not gonna be easy. It doesn't just fall out the sky. You know, it's easy to say, you know, someone plays division one basketball. Well, there's a lot that came behind that, yep. right? There's a, it's easy to say someone played division two, II, division three, whatever the level is, right? It doesn't really matter. The fact is you're blessed to play at the next level. Sure. That's a complete blessing. So just putting the label on it doesn't really, it kind of, sometimes it's a detriment, but what we want to do is just continue to help you get better. And that's sure. it, you know what I mean? So if you want to be, we're right there to push you forward. For sure. Where do you rank this year coaching for you? What do you rank this as, you know, with your top years of coaching? Is this, mm -hmm. you know, your best year you think, or did you? No, this was my toughest year. Toughest year, okay. This was my toughest okay. year. Um, and this was this was the toughest year because we, we just had a lot of internal things going on within the team. Um, and, you know, we had to, and it's not, it wasn't even basketball related, you know what I mean? So we just had to, we had to figure some things out. I had to figure out the players, they had to figure, you know, us out as a coaching staff and, you know, figure out that we just got to do things the right way. You know what I mean? So, um, and how we, again, how we conduct ourselves off the court, it does matter, right? So we want to make sure that we're just constantly pushing you guys in the right direction, helping you do the right thing. And it's not easy, no. you know, no. they, they, it's not easy, cause, but it's easy to do the wrong thing. That's the easy part. But the hard part is, saying staying disciplined going to class every day on time every day turning in my work every day like there are, there are hard things that you have to do and you have to do those things on a regular basis disciplined enough and be disciplined to stay disciplined so you know you got to continue with those just doing the little things all the time for sure and i admire that about you you know what i'm saying you touch on the details about everything with coaching mm -hmm. you were my first coach at the rec league level, uh, fifth grade, um, yeah. you know, and I, the first couple of practices, I walked in there and you, you just had, even at the rec league level, like mm -hmm. we're fourth, fifth grade, you know, mm -hmm. you still demanded a lot out of us. And I mm -hmm. was like, mom, I don't know if I want to, I don't play anymore because <laughs> this dude's mean or whatever. But, you know, growing up and just being a former basketball, uh, college basketball player, I like, you take that in and you realize that you appreciate coaches like that, that want the best out of you, especially like at a young age, you know what I mean? And I think it gets uh, confused sometimes that rec league is, it's rec league, have fun. But we, you know, we have fun, but we also were coached up. And uh, mm -hmm. I think that's helped me, you know, moving on in my life, former college basketball player, mm -hmm. training now, mm -hmm. uh, training athletes now. I think, you know, I can take those values that you were trying to instill in us at a young age and just apply it to, you know, the next generation coming up. You know, you talk about off the court stuff, showing up, being presentable, um, speaking to people, hello, how yes. are you doing? You know what I mean? All that stuff really matters, you know? Yes. And I think the mental aspect of the game is more important than the physical, you know, sometimes yes. just because there's a lot of details that go into it, mm -hmm. you know, especially, you know, especially this time of the year, you're trying to go to the state champ state tournament. Everyone's trying to, you know, get to Charleston. Um, it's a lot of detail. You yes. can't just, you know, think you can have all this talent mm -hmm. and just run up, run up and down and, no. you know, win games. You have to pay attention to scouting report. Uh, what play are we in right now? Clock scenarios, stuff like mm -hmm. that. It all, you know, plays a major role in, you know, getting to where you guys are now, mm -hmm. you know, the state tournament. We talk about your coaching career. Where did your coaching career start for you? Like, when was the first, what was the first time you started coaching? Basketball, I would say. Well, uh, basketball, first year I started coaching was, actually I think was with the, uh, Coach Smith and I at, at, currently at Jefferson uh, with the Bullets. I think that was the first time I started, got a, got a chance to coach. Um, I think it, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Coach, Millicent and yeah, they were the Bullets coach and I think they were kind of stepping down and you know, Coach Smith was kind of transitioning in and you know, he kind of, he just brought me on for sure. with him. So that's really, yeah, that's how long ago. We were, we used to practice in Paige Jackson. <laughs> We used to practice in that small didn't gym. Didn't even know they had a gym. Right, they, they we used to practice in that small gym. That's we used crazy. to practice back there. And then, uh, yeah, that's where we first started. And then, you know, it transitioned, uh, you know, position, I, I don't know, someone stepped down as far as a coach. It actually may have been Coach Murray 
that coached this, uh, you the know, Sonics. the previous. Yeah, he the coached Sonics. the Sonics. And we changed the name. That, yeah, we changed the name. I think it may have been Coach Murray that stepped down, um, and then we changed the name to the Pistons. And then, yeah, and then I started. Uh, we created our own travel team. And then we just kind of went from there. Yep. You know what I mean? So just been around the game a long time, and you know, and may rest in peace. But you know, Coach Barker, I love Coach Barker. Just detailed and everything. You know, he was. You know, everyone everyone wanted to play for Coach Barker growing up. You know what I mean? There was nothing like the Panther Classic. And, you know, so, you know, having your name up on the wall, that just, that meant everything, you know? So, um, you know, I always, I, I look, when I when I think about it, I never thought about coaching back, you know, way back then. But, you know, now when I look back, I, I realize how much that, you know, I learned from him, you know what I mean? And um, Coach Barker was just, he was, you know, he was, Coach Barker walked on water to yeah. us, you know, so um, everyone wanted to play for him and, you know, have our name up on the wall at Charlestown. It's Charlestown's School. called the Barker oh, Center yeah. now. Yeah, the Barker Center. yes, yes. So it was, it was always, that just, that meant everything. That and meant then everything. you got an opportunity to coach at Charlestown Middle School before mm -hmm. you were at Washington. Yes. Um, where you won a championship there as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it sounds like everywhere you've been, you know, you've been impactful um, and you've, You've won, you know what I mean? So that's gotta be, a, that's gotta feel good to you. You know what I mean? It that does. you can step into coaching positions and make some impact, you know what I mean? And like you talk about it, it didn't just happen when you got there. You no. know what I mean? There was a stepping stones that you had to take right. prior to mm -hmm. then. Um, so what motivate, what words of advice to younger coaches trying mm -hmm. to get into the coaching field? You know, what, what could you give them? So my, and I'll, I'll just tell you this, my first year at Charlestown, we were, you know, you hear, hear the stories on how coaches were before, whatever it was, but the first thing I always wanted to do, I just wanted to be someone that, you know, kids wanted to, wanted to play for, wanted to be there. I, you know, look, I'm never going to disrespect you and you we respect me we're, and we're okay. You know what I mean? I'm never going to, but my, my thing was just teach you the best way I could, but to younger coaches, don't speed up the process, right? Whatever that process is, it's okay. You know what I mean? We don't have to be in the fourth grade and you're just, you know, you have to play like you're a senior in high school. You don't have to, right? So you just lay the foundation and continue to build and just like a house, you know, you're building, you have your foundation and you just move forward. But um, the biggest, don't speed up the process, you know, and, and you have to be willing to lose. See, my first year, I was two and 12. Really? Wow. I was two and 12. Wow. But that's okay because the next year, we hung up a banner. Okay. So, but you have to be willing to lose because if you're willing to lose, and I'll, I'm not saying accepting losing, mm -hmm. but I'm saying you have to be willing to lose because it just may not be that time because maybe we're just not to where we need to be. I'd sure. rather you get better as a player than me win a game because sure. I'm okay. For sure. Like my kids are in school, my kids have gone to college. I don't, For sure. I'm good. For I don't, sure. you know what I mean? Sure. So as long as the kids are getting better and they're growing individually, then we won. Coach, what is the pros and cons of having a young team? You know, you have one senior this year. So, you know, what is the pros to this season and then the cons that also come with behind that? The pros are, you know, we can, I, I like seeing their growth. Um, I like seeing them evolve, and that's a big that's a big deal to me because I, I don't want players to feel like there's a ceiling and just you know kind of tap out. But um, I, I like to see their growth, and we want to constantly just push them forward, right? So that's the that's the pro for me. The cons maturity, you know, and, and accepting it, accepting the fact that yeah, they're you know where I'm going to coach all of them hard. You can't coach everyone the same way. You might not be able to, they might not receive the information the same way. So you have to know your players. Yep. You know, you have to know who can talk, who you can, how you can talk to them, how you, you know, how you going to get that message through. You have to know that that's extremely important yep. uh, because players, you know, some players may break down. Yep. Um, you know, they may, you might be able to get up in one of their face and then the other one, you might have to say, you might have to put your arm around them yep. a little bit. You know what I mean? So it just, it, you just have to know your players. Yep. You have to. And I, I don't, I don't know how else to put it, but you, you have to know your, you have to know your players. And I'm you glad know, you know, touched on it. You know, 
basically saying you have to coach each of your players differently, uh, oh, especially sorry. especially yeah. having a young team. <laughs> um, yes. Is that is that something you have you struggled with that ever? You know, coaching like you know, understanding that you have to coach everyone. I guess the same but different. Yeah, this year definitely. This year definitely. For sure. um, and you know, in in that part, because I think in you know in the past or even the last two years, you know, there might be my my tone may be a little different in that practice. You know what I mean? Especially, you know, if, hey, if we played a certain way, we didn't execute what we were supposed to do. My tone may be a little different mm -hmm. in that next practice. You know, um, which. You know, previously it may not have been that tone. You know what I mean? So you have to find that balance and you have to know when to really, you know, all right, we got to tighten, really got to tighten this up or, you know, we're just going to, and I don't want to say loosen up, but you just have to know how to reach them and you, you just got to feel sure. that moment, you know For what sure. I mean? So, and know. I feel like with having a young team, you know, you'll have all but one player returning with mm -hmm. some new covers coming in the expe expectations rise for your Absolutely. ball club and for what you have for your players mm -hmm. so you know like you said your tone may have been one way last mm -hmm. year this <laughs> yeah. year you know yeah. one little turnover mm -hmm. it, you, you're not tolerating it you know what i mean that's an example but um you know the expectation rises so i guess the margin for error does that it, it's definitely going to based on and i have to take ownership in that too, right because if i if I know that as a coaching staff, we haven't discussed this with you and you make the mistake, then I can't get on you because I got to say, you know what, you don't know. So that's my fault because I haven't taught you that part. For sure. So, you know, so it, it that's the other part of this. And, and you have and that's the other part, too, is just kind of finding, OK, we got a couple that might understand this, but then we might have a couple that don't. And that's OK. We just got to get them to this part, and then we got to continue to take this group and sure. push them forward. You know For what sure. I mean? So it's a you you really just have to check the temperature. You have to check the temperature with all of them, and you got to know you have to know your players at the For end sure. of the day. You have For to know. Sure. Going to the state tournament, you guys leave tomorrow. We're leaving uh, tomorrow nine a.m. Yeah. What's your emotions going to the state tournament? You know, this will be your first time going mm -hmm. as a coach. Mm -hmm. What are your emotions? How do you stay in the moment, knowing that? knowing that you have business on the line, mm -hmm. but to also take in this experience, you know what I mean? Because this isn't an experience that everyone just gets to go to every year. You know what I mean? It's a real right. honor, right. you know, being where we're from as well, mm -hmm. getting to Charleston, you know, talk about your emotions going into, you know, your trip tomorrow, you play Tuesday. Mm -hmm. uh, talk a little bit about that. We, we've we kind of been distracted with the actual trip itself because we've been doing a lot of the planning part, right? So we've kind of, that's our, that's our distraction. And, and to be honest, I'm glad I've had that distraction because the main thing that I've focused on is, you know, we're just going to do the scouting report and we're going to do everything else to make sure that we have a smooth transition from Monday through Saturday. That's, you know, that's been our main thing. Um, you know, but Coach Grantham, she's been a tremendous, she's been tremendous in this whole process as far as just making sure we have everything organized. But that's kind of been where my mind is. So other than the actual game, the experience itself, it hasn't hit me yet because I, I want to make sure that I'm locked into the moment sure. and I don't want to get, you know, because I, I'm a firm believer in players can feel your energy. So I don't want it to be, you know, of the mindset where it even looks like I'm overwhelmed or sure. whatever it might be because they trickle off of that, right? Sure. So, you know, I have to make sure that you know, sometimes you have to inject energy into your players. And then, um, so I want to make sure that, you know, the energy that I, that comes off of me is energy where they're coming in there, you know, like rabid dogs and just ready to go. You for know sure. what I mean? So that's the, that's kind of what for I'm sure. thinking. I don't know if it's going to work, sure, but sure. that's just what I've been, that's how I've been looking at it. For so sure. Just making sure we, we come in with the right mindset. For sure. Have you taken the time to really sit back and reflect on this whole year? I mean, you became the head coach, what, last May, June? Um, October. October. No, October. it's all good. October. Can you, you know, have you sat down and really taking this all in, you know, first year's head coach, making history, getting to the state tournament? Have you taken that all in yet? Or is that something you'll probably do after the season? No, I'll, I'll do that after the season. Um, I want to... You know, we we still have a job to do. We're not we're not coming off of that. 
you know. So when we're going to our end goal is to hold up a state title. And that's not, there's nothing, you know, like I told them, I said from the beginning, you don't want to play us in February. And then on top of that, now it doesn't, seedings don't matter, rankings don't matter. In between those lines, we're, everyone's zero on zero, right? Yeah, it's March. So it's March. It's, it's time to, it's time to ball. So everyone's zero on zero and we're here now. Why not win it? For sure, for sure. Why not? Well, I'll be at the state tournament Tuesday, coach. Okay. Can't wait to see you out there. I'm excited for you. Just, you know, Appreciate it. You, you know, you've know, you been someone close to my family for a long time. It's been fun to work with some of your players as well in the mm -hmm. off season. So we just can't wait to, you know, for you guys to hit the floor Tuesday night and, you know, get going. Yeah. Appreciate, appreciate you for uh, getting on with us tonight. Absolutely. And, uh, this was great. You know, good luck. Congrats on your season. Appreciate, appreciate it. You. Yes, yes sir. sir. Thank you for having me. Yep. Appreciate it. Appreciate it.